Hello there, very good evening and welcome to the news tonight where we get you the day's top stories from India and across the world. I'm Tracy Shilchi. Let's start the show with the headlines. Reserve Bank of India reveals that post demonetization, only 1.4% of scrapped 1,000 rupee notes did not come back into the banking system. The report says that out of 632.6 crore pieces in circulation, 8.9 crores haven't yet returned to banks. Union Cabinet clears the ordinance to raise cess on mid-sized, large cars and SUVs from 15 to 25 percent. GST Council to decide the date to implement the hike on the 9th of September. Haryana Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar rules out resignation over last Friday's violence that spread to Punjab, Rajasthan and Delhi. Submits report on the mayhem after meeting BJP party chief Amit Shah. A day after being paralysed by heavy rains, life in Mumbai moves towards normalcy. Waterlogging slows down vehicular movement and schools and colleges remain shut over fears of more rains. And 17 people are killed in flooding in Texas triggered by Hurricane Harvey. A 24-year-old Indian PhD student dies after being rescued from a swollen lake. Another Indian student is critical. Top story this evening, the Reserve Bank of India today confirmed that all but 1.4% of the old 1,000 rupee notes returned to the banking, post, uh, banking system post demonetization. The central bank released the data in its annual report for the financial year 2016-17. The report said that out of 632.6 crore pieces of 1,000 rupee currency notes in circulation, 6.23.7 crores were returned after the note ban. The report further said that the cost of printing of currency notes more than doubled in 2016-17 as compared to the previous year on account of new currency printing. The government replaced all 500 rupee notes with new ones, while it did not replace the 1,000 rupee notes and introduced a new 2,000 rupee note instead. Those dealing in cash currency were now compelled to deposit the money in the banks. And the anonymity which existed with regard to the ownership of this cash money operating in the system has come to an end. The money has now got identified with a particular owner. The expanded base of even indirect taxation, which is evident in the initial results, uh, uh, the deposits of the GST, is indicative of the fact that there are more and more transactions taking place within the system itself. So both the direct and the indirect tax base is unquestionably getting expanded, which was the prime object. The Union Cabinet has approved a reform process for the Indian Army. In a first ever exercise after independence, Defence Minister Arun Jaitley approved the process of reforms. Jaitley said that 65 out of 99 recommendations of the Shekatkar Committee have been accepted by the government. The panel was appointed to recommend measures to enhance combat capability of the armed forces and the reform process will include restructuring of various repair bases of the army besides ensuring structural improvement of the National Cadet Corps. The cabinet also approved promulgation of an ordinance to amend the GST compensation law paving the way for increasing cess on mid and large cars. The decision to increase the cess from 15 to 25 percent on mid and large size vehicles will be taken by the GST Council. Arun Jaitley further said that the increased cess would apply on motor vehicles for transport with a carrying capacity of not more than 13 persons, including the driver. Council ne nirne kiya tha ki jo do categories vehicles hain, ye sab vehicles pe lagu nahi hoga, keval do category pe hoga, jahan cess कि सबसे अधिक सीमा 15 परसेंट थी, उस कैप को बढ़ाकर 25 कर दिया जाए, ये एनेबलिंग है, ये सुविधा प्रोवाइड करता है, उस सेस को बढ़ाने की, सेस बढ़ाना है कि नहीं बढ़ाना किसी वाहन पे, ये निर्णय काउंसल का रहेगा। 
और काउंसिल के समक्ष आएगा Well, the Supreme Court on Wednesday said that it will resume hearing the Aadhaar case in the first week of November. This comes after Attorney General K K Venugopal told the Apex Court that the center will extend the deadline to furnish Aadhaar details to avail benefits of various social welfare schemes till the 31st to December. The court then said that there was no urgency to hear the matter and listed it for November. The earlier deadline for mandatory Aadhaar to avail social benefits was the 30th of September. Facing flak from opposition on the violence sparked by the Dera Sacha Sauda chief's conviction, Haryana Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar today ruled out his resignation. Khattar also met BJP Chief Amit Shah today and handed him a report on the violence, saying that his government handled the situation with restraint. Here's a report. Haryana Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar ruled out his resignation over violence that killed 38 people and left over 250 injured on August 25th. The violence was sparked by angry followers of self-styled godman Gurmeet Ram Rahim after his conviction in two rape cases. Khattar, who met BJP chief Amit Shah, submitted a report about the mayhem that started in Panchkula and spread to other parts of the state besides Punjab, Rajasthan and Delhi. हम लोगों ने इस पूरी घटना के ऊपर अपना पूरा सहयोग किया है प्रशासन शासन सबकी तरफ से इस घटना का जो भी मिनिमम लॉस के साथ इसकी जो टारगेट था जो कानून की पालना कराने का विषय जो कोर्ट की ओर से संबंध मिले हुए थे इनको हाजिर होने के राम रहीम को उस नाते से ये हमारा टारगेट था कि वो वहाँ पेश हों Opposition parties who have been demanding Khattar's resignation have accused the BJP ruled state government of mishandling the matter. And did uh, Amit Shah ask for his resignation? That he has to deny the country that's asking for his resignation. If Amit Shah had asked for his resignation, I can understand. Uh, but here, the question is: the whole country has asked for his resignation. So I don't think by going and convincing Amit Shah, the G, the problem will be solved because Amit Shah himself has been very worried about the situation in Haryana, and he knows very well that another victory in Haryana is almost impossible. within the presence and the leadership of mr khattar the punjab and haryana high court has come down hard on the khattar government stating that the government was protecting dera followers and extending them political patronage meanwhile life is returning to normal in haryana and punjab with schools and markets reopening 5 days after the violence security forces are however still on alert in the two states bureau report rajya sabha tv After Tuesday's deluge, Mumbai tried to get back to its feet today as the rain subsided. Suburban rain train services resumed partially, much to the relief of those stranded at stations since yesterday. Also, vehicular movement on the roads improved, though flight operations remained largely affected. The heavy downpour and flooding claimed at least five lives and injured dozens. Life in Mumbai moved towards normalcy on Wednesday, a day after the city was virtually paralyzed by heavy rains. Thousands of stranded commuters headed home with the partial resumption of suburban train services as the rain subsided. कल दोपहर बारह बजे से यहीं पे हम लोग ये स्टेशन पे बाकी तो थोड़ी बहुत दिक्कत तो सबको होती है तो एडजस्टमेंट करने में फायदा है। मैं आठ की हुई थी और अब भी जस्ट सुबह घर पे जा रही हूँ बहुत गंदा एक्सपीरियंस था एक्चुअली अच्छा नहीं था एक्सपीरियंस कल का। Road traffic that remained paralyzed on Tuesday due to water logging and high tide. was also back to near normal but vehicular movement was slow due to waterlogged roads people stranded at different locations headed home after a harrowing time on tuesday sab pura bombay ghumte hain ghumte aa rahe hain hum log aage bhi dekh liye hum log ji ha ji ha pura bhaikala matunga jj bhindi bazaar pura pani itna itna kamar ke upar hai although the med department ruled out the possibility of heavy rains on wednesday government offices and educational institutions remained closed The famous Dabba Walas of Mumbai also cancelled their delivery of over two lakh tiffins to office goers. There has been a reduction in the rainfall activity in last eight to ten hours. Situation is likely to continue for some more hours like this. But because there is a lot of moisture incursion in Mumbai in last 24 hours, we are expecting that definitely there there will be there are chances of uh, rainfall again picking up 
लेट इन द आफ्टरनून बट द शावर्स एंड इंटरमीडियंट शावर्स विल बी देर मुंबई के डब्बे वाले उस लोकल में अटके पड़े हुए थे आज सुबह वो घर पे जा रहे हैं खाली डब्बा अब तक घर घर पे नहीं पहुंचा है अगर खाली डब्बा ही नहीं पहुंचा तो नया डब्बा हम भरेंगे किसमें डिस्ट्रेस्ड सिटीजन एज वेल एज ऑपोजिशन मेंस ब्लेम द बी एम सी फॉर दर लैक ऑफ अगर अगर ऐसी कंडीशन रहेगी तो सब ठीक हो सकता है लेकिन अगर आज और बारिश होएगा तो और ज्यादा दिक्कतें हो सकती है क्योंकि बीएमसी का टोटल सिस्टम फेलियर हो गया था कल हमने देखे जगह जगह में हम इतना पानी भरे थे हमने ना बीएमसी का एक आदमी देखे ना पुलिस का एक आदमी था सिर्फ लोकल वॉलेंटियर्स लोग जहां जहां ढक्कन खुला था उन लोग वहां खड़ा रहकर उन लोग सबको सिटीजन को वार्न कर रहे थे दो में जो बारिश हुई थी उससे अगर कल की बारिश की आप तुलना करें तो साफ साफ दिखता है कि प्रशासन ने कुछ नहीं सीखा 12 साल हो गए उस हादसे को अगर बीएमसी ने नालों के रुंदीकरण का उसको चौड़ा करने का जो प्रोजेक्ट है ब्रिम्स्टो वार्ड उस प्रोजेक्ट को पूरी तरह से लागू किया होता तो पानी की निकासी और तेजी से हो सकती थी फॉलोइंग ट्यूजडेज पीपल इन मुंबई ओपन देर होम्स एंड हार्ट टू स्ट्रेंजर्स ऑफरिंग असिस्टेंस टू दो स्ट्रांडेड इन द्लॉट Stranded commuters were offered food and water at regular intervals. This is uh, the Indian Navy's uh, initiative to uh, provide uh, uh, as much of uh, support possible uh, to all the people who have been stranded because of the floods. Navy helicopters were also kept on standby to meet any eventuality in view of further heavy rains, while the NDRF was also put on high alert. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also urged the people of Mumbai and surrounding areas to stay safe and take all necessary precautions while assuring help to the government of Maharashtra. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu today raised concerns about the plight of people living below the poverty line. Delivering the APJ Abdul Kalam Memorial Lecture organized by the India Islamic Cultural Center The vice president also said that many great people contributed to India's freedom struggle and inspired the nation for years. But post independence he said that former president Dr APJ Abdul Kalam was the only one who inspired every strata of society especially the youth. The vice president was also awarded an honorary membership of the IICC. The first APJ Abdul Kalam lecture was given by finance minister Arun Jaitley. He is one of the loud leaders of the country dr abdul kalam one of the darling of the youth of the country particularly the new indian generation we had gandhi ji we had nehru ji we had pandit uh, govindwala pant r rao we have balgan terak we have sardar vallabhai patel we have subhash chandra bose we have so many great stalwarts who inspired the nation but after independence after independence if one man has moved the nation if you have to say one among the top is dr abdul kalam he made everybody to think in more national news and what highlights the sorry state of medical infrastructure in rajasthan a shocking video has emerged showing surgeons arguing amongst themselves during a critical operation at a hospital in jodhpur the incident took place at the umair the women and children hospital on tuesday when a gynecologist and an anesthetist entered into a verbal spat while a pregnant woman was being operated upon one of the doctors later walked out of the operation theater and the newborn child died due to a false pulse a falling pulse rate the incident went viral after some body present in the delivery room made a video of the incident both the doctors have now been suspended and an inquiry committee has been constituted to probe the matter chalta operation chhod kar ke theater mein jo doctor ka jo jhagda hua उस प्रकरण को लेकर के वरिष्ठ न्यायाधिपति श्री गोपाल कृष्ण जी व्यास एवं मनोज कुमार जी गर्ग साहब की डिवीजन बेंच ने इस प्रकरण को बहुत सीरियस मानते हुए कॉग्निजेंस लिया है तथा हमारे यहाँ के लीगल सर्विसेज के जो अधिकारी हैं श्री प्रेम रतन ओझा साहब और देवेंद्र शर्मा इन दोनों को पाबंद किया निर्देशित किया है कि आप इस प्रकरण की संपूर्ण जाँच रिपोर्ट दो बजे तक वापस न्यायालय के समक्ष प्रस्तुत करें इट इज इन ह्यूमन एंड इट इज नॉट एक्सपेक्टेड आउट ऑफ डॉक्टर्स वर इन दी ओ टी डिलीवरिंग अ बेबी एंड दे हैड अ फाइट इन बिटवीन दम सेल्स एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट वट आई हैव कम टू नो दैट चाइल्ड इज नो मोर सो एक्शन हैज बीन टेकन अगेंस्ट दैम 
and even high court uh, has asked uh, the hospital to send uh, a report on it chikitsa mantri so rahe isliye si ghatnaye ghat rahi hai itni dardnak itni amanvya ghatna ke ghatne ke baad yadi chikitsa mantri so rahe to uska parinam ye nikla ki mananiya uchchitam nyayalay ne kuch sangyan lekar ke committee ka gathan kiya rajya sarkar ki chikitsa vyavastha par avishwas vyakt kiya hai kal pradhan mantri telemedicine ka daava karke chale gaye dibas se apne khud bhi dekha janta ko bhi dikhane ka prayas kiya lekin mera ye manna hai ki pehli ghatna nahi aisi aneko ghatnaye hui And in fact in continuous medical negligence 61 children mostly newborns died in the last 72 hours at a government run hospital in Uttar Pradesh's Gorakhpur district due to various causes in the last 24 hours alone 19 children died at the Baba Raghav Das Medical College seven due to encephalitis the rest were babies who died in the hospital's neonatal intensive care unit 290 children have died so far in the BRD Medical College in August Dr PK Singh the recently appointed working principal of the medical college hospital said that there were 1250 deaths since January especially in encephalitis infant and the children's wards on the 29th of August UP special task force arrested the former principal of the BRD medical college Rajiv Mishra and his wife in connection with 70 child deaths due to alleged oxygen shortage and encephalitis पिछले 48 एट आवर्स में बी आर डी मेडिकल कॉलेज में फोर्टी टू डेथ्स हुई हैं इसमें एन आई सी यू में सोलह डेथ्स हुई हैं और पी आई सी यू में ट्वेंटी सिक्स डेथ्स हुई हैं और सेवन डेथ्स जो हैं इनकेफ्लाइटिस से हैं रेस्ट डेथ्स जो हैं वो अदर पीडेटिक डिजीज से हैं तमाम डॉक्टर जो हैं वो बच्चों का इलाज नहीं कर रहे हैं और वो सिर्फ कागज बनाने में लगे हुए हैं जिससे कि मुख्यमंत्री के चहीते कहीं इस जांच की पड़ताल में ना आ जाए हम सबको इतना दर्द है इतना दुख है जिसकी कोई सीमा नहीं हो सकती शायद के अन्य देश में ये हुआ होता तब तक हाकार मच गया होता हम नहीं समझ पा रहे हैं कि मुख्यमंत्री जी के अगर गृह जनपद में उत्तर प्रदेश की ये दशा है तो पूरे प्रदेश की क्या दशा होगी इट ओनली शोज दैट द प्रायोरिटी ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट इज नॉट द हेल्थ ऑफ द चिल्ड्रन not the weeping mothers of these children but elsewhere and it is for this reason i think that the government is failing the people the mothers and the children of this country the cbi today filed 18 cases related to land allotment to private companies in rajasthan some of these firms are linked to robert vadra the development comes a week after the rajasthan government recommended a cbi probe into dubious land deals in bikaner including cases allegedly involving a company promoted by Robert Vadra according to the Rajasthan home minister Gulab Chand Kataria four of the 18 cases are against Vadra's company that was allegedly involved in the illegal purchase of nearly 275 bigas of land together the 18 FIRs are in connection with the purchase of close to 1400 bigas of land under fake names the minister alleged that the company related to Robert Vadra was a third party to purchase 275 bigha land in 2010 and had sold parts of the land to a fourth party in 2012 and here are more updates from across the country in nationwide the delhi high court today asked the delhi police to explain their delay in investigating the sunanda pushkar murder case the court asked the police to inform it about the status of probe within 2 weeks The court was hearing a plea by BJP leader Subramanian Swami for a court monitored probe by a multidisciplinary CBI team into the death. The Delhi High Court also sought response of the government and the enforcement directorate on businessman Moin Akhtar Qureshi's plea challenging his arrest in a money laundering case. A bench of justices issued notice to the government and the ED asking them to file a reply within 5 days. It also asked the center and the ED to show the official records on the next date of hearing which would be the 13th of September. A special court today directed the CBI to hand over documents to Himachal Pradesh Chief Minister Veer Bhadra Singh and others in connection with a 10 crore rupee disproportionate assets case against him. The special judge passed the directions after the CBI submitted that the documents could not be handed to the accused persons. The court put up the matter for hearing on the 31st of October. 
In other news, Pakistani troops violated ceasefire today amid heavy firing along the line of control in Rajori district of Jammu and Kashmir. Indian troops retaliated and the exchange of fire between the two sides was going on until last reports came in. There are no reports of casualties so far. On the 27th of August, remember, five people were injured when Pakistani troops opened fire in Shahpur sector of Poonch district. Till the 1st of August, the Pakistani army violated ceasefire 285 times, while the number was significantly less at 228 last year. Several thousand of border residents of Noshera sector are now living in government relief camps at safer places since July after being displaced by cross-border shelling. सात विलेजेस में एक अलर्ट भी हमने किया लोगों को उनसे हमारे इंटरेक्शन भी है और जो स्कूल्स भी हैं उसे जिन में वो सभी अभी क्लोज किए हैं क्योंकि अभी इंटरमीडिएट शैलिंग की रिपोर्ट्स हैं वहाँ पे और प्रिकॉशनरी मेजर्स हमने ली हैं ऑलरेडी हमारी टीम डेली वहाँ विजिट करती हैं कल भी एक्सटेंसिव दौरान उन्होंने किया था जहाँ बंकर्स वगैरह बनाए जा रहे हैं और लोगों को भी सेंसिटाइज अलर्ट किया गया इसके लिए China on Wednesday warned India that it should learn its lesson from the recently resolved border standoff between the two countries. It also asked India to prevent similar incidents in the future. China's statement comes two days after the 73-day standoff between India and China at Doklam ended with both the countries withdrawing their troops. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi made the statement at a briefing on the upcoming BRICS summit next week that will be attended by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Wang claimed that there is huge potential for greater cooperation between India and China, which will help both countries. Chinese President Xi Jinping will chair the BRICS summit in China's southeastern coastal city of Xiamen in Fujian province, from the September 3rd to 5th. Yi,当同金砖国家领导人一道，就金砖合作和共同关系的问题深入的交换看法。会有期间，中方还将举办新兴市场国家和发展中国家的对话会。金砖五国以及埃及。China also hit back at British Prime Minister Theresa May for her comments that Beijing needs to put more pressure on North Korea to stop missile tests. China hit back, saying that some relevant sites were only selectively carrying out the UN resolutions by pushing hard on sanctions, yet neglecting to push for a return to talks. This is the latest in a string of strong reactions to North Korea's latest missile launch on Tuesday. U.S. President Donald Trump says that the launch signaled the regime's contempt for its neighbors and the U.N., adding that all options were still on the table. However, North Korea insists that the launch was a direct response to U.S.-South Korean joint military drills. What happened yesterday is absolutely unacceptable and irresponsible. No country should have missiles flying over them like those 130 million people in Japan. It's unacceptable. They have violated every single UN Security Council resolution that we've had. And so I think something serious has to happen. The U.S. and its allies continue to look for ways to contain North Korea's belligerence, this after the regime's latest launch of an intermediate-range ballistic missile over Japan. North Korean news agencies said that the launch was a prelude to more military options aimed at Guam, with more launches planned in the future. It added that the launch was to counter the ongoing U.S. and South Korean military drills. It is undeniable fact that U.S. is driving the station of Korean Peninsula towards extreme level of explosion by deploying huge strategic assets around the peninsula to conduct series of nuclear war drills and maintaining nuclear threats and blackmail for over a half century. On Tuesday, United Nations Security Council met to discuss the latest launch, condemning it as outrageous. Secretary General Antonio Guterres said that the launch undermined regional security and stability. Uh, the Security Council came together unanimously to support uh, the increased sanctions resolution 2371 and I hope that all of my colleagues will come together with the same spirit of unity uh, to respond today uh, as uh, unitedly and firmly as we did then. While U.S. President Donald Trump continues to warn Pyongyang that all options were on the table, Russia and China cited the joint U.S.-South Korean military drills as the source of the latest tensions. Russia further warned that the use of force was a path to nowhere, a path to catastrophe.
Look, um, we appreciate the very strong support that President Trump is um, you know, showing uh, to Japan, and we appreciate the fact that he said everything, every option is on the table. Pyongyang has conducted a flurry of missile tests recently. This is the first time it has fired what is thought to be a ballistic weapon over Japan. As the missile soared over Hokkaido Island, Japanese authorities issued a safety warning, urging citizens to shelter in a study building or basement. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe called the missile launch an unprecedented threat to his country. The launch comes just over two weeks after North Korea threatened to fire a series of missiles in the waters around the U.S. Pacific territory of Guam. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. An Indian student died today after being injured in Texas due to Hurricane Harvey. Nitin, Nitin Bhatia was rescued in a critical condition from a swollen river in Texas on Saturday. Meanwhile, the devastating storm made a second landfall in Louisiana state. At least 17 people have died in Texas so far since Harvey made landfall on Friday. Three days after being pulled out of a swollen lake in Texas, 24-year-old Indian student Nikhil Bhatia died on Wednesday. Bhatia, a PhD student at the Texas A&M University, was brought from Lake Bryan on Saturday in a critical condition. The condition of another student, Shalini Singh, who was rescued along with Bhatia, is however critical. Bhatia is the first Indian casualty due to the catastrophic flooding in storm-ravaged Texas, where 17 people have died so far. Close to 3,500 people were rescued from low-lying areas on Tuesday, with over 13,000 residents being taken to various public shelters. I know by the time that I got out of there, it was up to my chest. Oh, it, was, it was pretty bad. You know, I think, I think it's a catastrophic for everybody in Houston. Uh, you know, I'm from here. I've never seen it. I lived in South Carolina for years and been to a lot of hurricanes. Never seen nothing like this before. Away from the house yesterday evening about 5 o'clock. And this is what has happened. Packed up what we could pack up and uh, uh, thankfully got out. Harvey made its second landfall west of Cameron in Louisiana early on Wednesday. Flash flood warnings were issued in the neighboring states where Harvey is expected to produce three to six inches of more rain in places that have already had over 17 inches of rain since Friday. The National Hurricane Center said the threat of heavy rains has ended in the Houston area, but the life-threatening flooding will continue in and around southwest Louisiana for the rest of the week. U.S. President Donald Trump visited Texas on Tuesday to survey the response to the devastating storm. He congratulated Texas governor and his team on doing what he described as a terrific thank job in dealing with the disaster. I want to thank our governor. Your governor has done a fantastic job. Governor Abbott, thank you very much. Historic. It's epic what happened. But you know what? It happened in Texas and Texas can handle anything. The storm shut down one-fifth of U.S. oil refineries. The largest oil plant that produces 6 lakh barrels of oil per day is also closed since Tuesday due to excessive flooding. Gasoline prices have spiked to their highest point since July 2015, prompting fears of a fuel shortage. Harvey has drawn comparisons with Hurricane Katrina that devastated New Orleans 12 years ago, killing 1,800 people and causing an estimated $108 billion in damage. Bureau report, Raja Sabha TV. And here are finally some updates from the world of sports in Sports Beat. Ace boxer Gaurav Viduri entered the semi finals of the World Championships after defeating Tunisia El Mahdi in Hamburg in Germany. Viduri became only the fourth Indian boxer to secure himself a medal. He will now clash against Duke Reagan of the US in the semi-final bout. The only Indians to achieve the feat earlier are Vikas Krishnan, Vijendra Singh and Shiva Thapa. Defending champion Anjali Kerber was knocked out of the US Open in the first round after she lost 6-3, 6-1 to Japanese teenager Naomi Osaka. Osaka was rarely troubled by the six-seeded Kerber who has not won a title since last year. In the men's singles, number one seeded Rafael Nadal beat Serbian Dusan Lahovic in straight sets after a close first set. 
In another match, world number three, Roger Federer beat Francis Tiafoe 4 for 6, 6 2, 6 1, 1 6, 6 4 in a very tight match. Bangladesh registered their first ever win over Australia in Test cricket, beating Australia by 20 runs in a thrilling opening game in Dhaka. Shakib Al Hassan took five wickets for 85 to bowl out Australians for 244 runs Bangladesh in the second history. session. And David Warner was the highest scorer for the Aussies with 112 runs there. on the board. The Australians had a target of 265 to chase in the second innings, but collapsed to Bangladeshi bowling as Shakib finished with a haul of 10 wickets. Mushfiq Rahim and men for the very first That's all we have for you on the news tonight from the entire team here. Good night. Thank you.